We all want to stay safe and we expect our governments, including the EU, to protect us and to keep us safe. That means assessing hazard and risk. But what's the difference? A hazard is something that can theoretically cause harm. A risk is the likelihood, high or low, that a hazard will actually cause harm. Policymakers have to take both into account when drafting laws and it can be a tough balancing act. Let's look at an example. A massive volcano erupts, huge lava flows and ash spewing into the atmosphere. There is a hazard. The eruption could endanger lives of people living close by. But the eruption takes place on an uninhabited island in the middle of an ocean. The risk of endangering lives is therefore very low. Another example in our daily life are electronic goods such as smartphones, TVs or refrigerators. They all contain a wide range of hazardous substances which are needed to allow the devices to function. While the use is proven to be safe, some hazardous substances may be released when recycled under inappropriate conditions and endanger the environment or the health of workers. This is where lawmakers can step in. Depending on where and how the risks occur, they might decide to take measures to ban the substance altogether if there's a risk in all its uses and feasible substitutes are available. In cases where the risks occur in specific uses only, they can restrict the substance in those uses where risks occur and cannot be managed, or when risks occur only during manufacturing or recycling, they can take targeted measures at the workplace in order to manage the risk where it occurs. Refrigerators in the 20th century using CFCs as refrigerant are one example where risks occurred during use and recycling from the release of CFCs which are known to deplete the ozone layer, and less hazardous alternatives were available. Consequently, they've been banned and the risk of ozone depletion was mitigated. But what about when lawmakers still aren't sure what action to take? The precautionary principle is a strategy where scientific understanding of potential risks is incomplete. The principle takes the view that if there is no evidence, then there is a social responsibility to protect the public while further scientific evidence is gathered. In this case, lawmakers can decide to err on the side of caution. In the case of the eruption of the Icelandic volcano, Eyjafjallajökull back in 2010, which spilled massive ash clouds into the atmosphere, flight safety authorities applied the precautionary principle in the absence of evidence whether air traffic might be endangered or not. The collection of evidence through flight tests and the confirmation that there were no risks led to the decision to gradually reopen air traffic in Europe, even though the volcano continued its activities. So, next time you're told that your flight is cancelled, you might be experiencing the application of the precautionary principle due to a volcano eruption.